You've got ideas, you've got ambition, you've got no time, or so you think. I'm Marissa Lonick, and I help busy moms with big dreams and no time. Join me each week as I dive into time management strategies, goal setting and achieving framework, and inspiring guests who are juggling mom life, work life, fill in the blank life. Dreams don't work unless you do, and just because you're a mom doesn't mean you can't still make it happen, whatever it means to you. Welcome to the Mama Work It podcast. Hello, hello, mamas. Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Mama Work It podcast. I am just so excited to introduce you today to our guest and my friend, Nicole Cumberbatch. Nicole is a top-rated podcaster, former corporate VP, published author, and she currently serves on the Financial Advisory Committee for the City of Coral Springs, Florida. Nicole created the Motherhood Village in 2021, where her mission is to educate, uplift, and support mothers with empowering and informative conversations and meaningful connections. Oof, we have so much good stuff to talk about today. Nicole, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me on, Marissa. I'm very excited to speak with you. Yes. All right. Well, I know you, but our listeners may not know you. So tell us more about yourself and your journey as a mom and an entrepreneur. Sure, I guess um, in a condensed version. So I'm a mom, first and foremost, Um, had my little guy five years ago, he turned five in November. And as a business owner, kind of my journey started after I became a mom. Um, As you stated in my bio, I was a corporate VP. I was a controller and then worked my way up to uh, VP of finance and HR. And I worked in that role for a couple of different companies. And I thought, yeah, this, you know, I mean, I worked my butt off to get to that level. Um, Very ambitious. um, And then when my son came, everything changed and everything changed in a way that was completely unexpected, you know, grieving my past identity. Uh, you know, wait a minute, now all of a sudden my career is not my top priority. Now I actually don't even care. Whereas before I was first one in, last one out working on vacations. And it was very difficult for me to to have that. Um, and then also after my son was born, I battled postpartum anxiety which was also something new for me because I was never really an anxious person before. So I channeled that and I said, okay, what am I going to do with this? And I decided to create my podcast in 2019 called Mama's No Best because I just felt, well, it was Mama's No Best. We got something to say because I felt like we did have something to say. And I felt like conversations or honest conversations about motherhood just weren't being um, talked about or, you know, how your partner changes or how you grieve your identity, uh, how, you know, you can shift from, wait a minute, I'm a corporate career mom. How do I juggle being a corporate career mom and a new mom and on all of the things? And that was in 2019. And then fast forward, after having several conversations with many different women, the common denominator was they either had a village that helped them propel to whatever they needed or they lacked a village. And I said, you know, I want to create that village for moms in the South Florida community. But even just to back up a little bit, I left corporate in 2021, um, kind of that great resignation due to not having the employer support when my son needed time off. And I was just tired of the same old same old of me getting anxious to have to ask for time off and sometimes even lie about why I needed to have time off. And I was just tired of that same cycle. So I left and I uh, said, look, I've been, I've, I've been in finance and bookkeeping and all the things for many years. I'll do, I'll do this on my own. And I did. I have several clients that I that I do now and I, I, I work with. So that kind of basically was the introduction to my entrepreneurial journey because it was the first time I was my own business. I was in control, um, getting clients. But really, the motherhood village is my backbone of everything. And I created that in 2021, which was just last year. And I offer webinars, workshops. I have the podcast. I started a monthly support group that has been going phenomenally. And then I also created the Motherhood Village Summit um, last year and um, doing the second one in September of this year. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. 
That's it. Just that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as high level and condensed as I could with, you know, without being too long winded, but I, I, they all co correlate and kind of um, f come together to where I am today, basically. Yeah. I want to touch upon something you said that I feel like too many women don't talk about. It still feels a little taboo, I think, out there. And that is the identity shift that you mentioned. Can we dive into this yes. topic a little bit? Let's go. Sure. Yeah. Hit me with it. What do you want to ask me? Or <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, I agree with you. I think a lot of women and a lot of our listeners particularly are ambitious and pre-kids, you know, their top priority maybe is their career and that trajectory and that growth. And then all of a sudden things get rocked and it's not a bad thing, right? Like I wanted to be a mom just as much as I wanted to excel in my career for my whole life. Yes. But then once I became a mom, things definitely did shift in the way I worked. I worked a lot smarter, not necessarily harder, right? But I still yes. worked my booty Big off. One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. You just you want like you're more interested, let's say, in the flex time rather than the bonus, right? Or whatever it is. Yes. You mentioned a little bit of how this showed up for you. What do you see even in the motherhood village of how this shows up for other women? Because I know you've you've got like hundreds of podcast episodes to date. I yeah. know you've had many conversations on this topic. Yeah. It's a big one. What I found, truthfully, that's been a big correlation are the moms that are in corporate America that have a lot of that identity shift along with the, a lot of the anxiety that comes with it. Um, not too many of the stay-at-home moms that I interviewed. It was like a really different kind of um, a just shift of the, the moms and what I kind of test. And again, I'm not an expert, but in having, you know, several conversations is... I think there is something with being so ambitious for whatever reason, right? I mean, you and I have had deep conversations. Is it our childhood that makes us push forward? It, you know, whatever it is that's pushing us forward to have these large goals, particularly in corporate America, not wanting to be entrepreneurs, but in corporate America, then you have this little person that kind of changes everything. And maybe, like you said, you wanted to be a mom, but that correlation of like, wait a minute, can I be both? Am I allowed to be both? What does that look like? How can I juggle all of the things um, where, and again, you and I have discussed this prior, just in other different ways, our parents and moms, even though I had a working mother, it wasn't necessarily to be like I was, like I wanted to be a CEO or CFO, like that was my goal, right? And I got close to it with the VP where my mom worked in an office and I thought that was the coolest thing, but that was kind of her level of where she was at. And then she came home and did what she had to do. Um, so I, I, I think there is that, that correlation there between working in corporate and being a mom where, how do we do it? Which is why I think these conversations are so important because we need to hear that it is possible, that it's okay to say, wow, I kind of miss being able to do all the things, even though I adore my children and love being a mom, but I miss what I used to be able to do. I miss having this. What does my identity look like? And to question those things without being shamed for it um, because it's all natural and it's all a part of the process. It's all very normal. Um, so that's, so yeah, so the correlation of the corporate mom with motherhood and then just allowing these conversations to happen without fear of judgment and to know, oh, okay, this is normal. For me, I would actually love to stay in corporate. Truthfully, I loved it. I just wasn't getting the support, right? Which is a whole nother issue that we can discuss. Um, but yeah, that was a big one, the, the identity. And I'm truthfully now even settling in and what that looks like now, five years in, I think I've kind of settled like, okay, I'm his mom. I also love podcasting. I love this and all the identities can mix. Um, and I can be different things. I don't have to just be this, 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 if that, if that makes sense. Totally makes sense. And I think you know, society speaking, we like to label things, right? It's like a comfortable thing to do, yes. right? So like yes. when we label, let's say working mom, like we have a vision of what that looks like. Now, what I always thought this looked like, do you remember that Sarah Jessica Parker movie where she is the working mom 
and she is like a lunatic in the movie. Like she gets lice <laughs> and she's like, she yes. does like the pie from the store and she makes it look store bought because like she's got the mom yes. guilt. She's trying to juggle like the meetings and the travel and taking care of her kids. And it just, I feel like society- it did it work. Yeah. Society paints being a working mom as failing at one or the other. Like you cannot succeed Correct. at both. And we put this label on things or like a stay at home mom. Oh, you know, she's always doing the Pinterest crafts or always like the room mom or all the things. It's so true. And, you know, I I feel like labels are bullshit. Uh, In all honesty, (laughs) (laughs) when I started the blog, which started my business, but I didn't know it was my business at the time. I just started writing on the internet. The first post I ever wrote, and I've taken it down since, so sorry, but the first post I ever wrote was, don't label me. I swear to God, Mm -hmm. that was the title. And it was like, I am so many things besides a mom, an employee, like a corporate executive, a wife, like all the hats I wear. Like I am so much more than this. Like I'm a human being. And I like, we're all, we all need to remember that there's like such a makeup of who we are. And we don't have to go, like feel like we need to go down one path or the other. We can go down several paths all the time. A hundred percent, which to your point is probably what leads in addition to the anxiety and the identity because it's like, wait a minute, society's telling me I have to be this, right? I remember when COVID hit and we were home and I was like, oh my gosh, I am not the Pinterest mom. Like I'm just not. And I tried my hardest. I was like, you know, he's out of the, you know, preschool. And I'm like, I got to keep this kid, you know, I, I just put so much pressure. And then finally, because having wonderful conversations on my podcast with different experts and different things, I just kept hearing like, they'll be okay. You you know, you have to do what's best for you. And I was like, look, let's not try and be a Pinterest mom. Let me just be the mom that he needs. And let's just kind of have fun. And we did. And it ended up being phenomenal. Um, So yes, I think labels are bullshit and we have to let them go. And I think that that just adds an, an extra layer of pressure that's just unnecessary. Totally. Okay. I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I have an idea of what inspired you to make the motherhood village because you had mentioned this common denominator of, you know, yes. women who were thriving had the village and women who weren't didn't overall, right? So mm-hmm, you correct. wanted to create this motherhood village basically for women who needed it and your local community. Tell me what's like the first thing you did to get started? Um, oh gosh, that's a great question. I'm trying to think because this, it happened so fast and it was last year where it kind of hit me. And, you know, I, I was thinking of the name, I think to your point, when you first mentioned your blog, right, you were like, it wasn't a business. I just started my blog. Same thing with my podcast in 2019. I didn't do it the proper way. Right. And I'm, I'm doing that in quotes because I just, I had something to say. I wanted to have conversations with women that I just felt needed to be had. So fast forward, I started getting all the pressure of, okay, well, maybe the name should change. And I love the motherhood village aspect because it encompassed everything. Um, so one of the first things though I did was I said, well, what creates a village? And obviously I still stayed with my podcast, but then I started collaborating with some of the women that I brought on that I felt, um, had something to give. So I did a webinar for new, um, and expecting moms, and collaborated with um, actually my own lactation consultant slash midwife uh, who spoke about breastfeeding, uh, a perinatal mental health uh, therapist where we talked about mental health, Dr. Organic Mommy. I don't know if any of you are familiar with her. She's amazing. We talked about all things non-toxicity and, you know, things as a new mom, um, you know, to just build healthier habits and nutrition. Um, and then there was a, a woman in Rhode Island who has baby bloom newborn kids care where she actually is a night nurse. I had my own misconceptions about what a night nurse was. Um, and she completely blew my mind with no, 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 no. I was like, I thought it was this like bougie thing that, you know, people with money had and like, who wants a night nurse? And she completely blew my mind to say no. In other cultures, you have this village and part of that village is other people come in so that you can sleep and they help with your baby and all these things. So when I talked with her on my podcast, I was like, okay, I need to let other mothers know because there could be another mother who has the same misconception that I do that. No one needs to come in and help me with my baby at night. No one needs to help me with this. I got it. Uh, So that was actually one of the first things I did. I wanted to have this webinar and workshop because of the conversations I was having and I wanted other women to kind of um, 
to be exposed to that. Uh, so that was a two day webinar I did. And it was a it was a good learning process, right? Because when you start a business, and you have this great idea, you're like, Oh, everyone's going to come to this webinar, <laughs> right? Everyone's going to show up. And then you're like, wait, no, I have to do the work now. Now comes the work of marketing it and promoting it. Um, so that was a really good learning experience for me. And and it just steamrolled from there. And I just, from one thing to another, it just steamrolled and brought on other people, other webinars, workshops. And then July of last year, I uh, created the motherhood support group, which was a thing that I always wanted from even when my son was born, because part of my issues also as a career mom was that a lot of mommy and me classes and things happened during the day when I worked and I couldn't leave work. So I always won't knew um, that if I had the opportunity to do like a support group or a mommy and me class, it would cater to those moms that couldn't go during the day. So I started, I again, collaborated with a podcast guest who's a chiropractor and we started in July and it's been going great ever since. I have new moms come, pregnant moms. Um, I had a mom bring her new baby six weeks later to introduce to the group. She still comes regularly um, and it's been phenomenal. I love that. And when when you said that with the timing, I got chills because I think any working mom listening has felt that before, has felt like that, almost like that, like not being invited to the party type of feeling. Right? Yes. Yes. And it sucks. It does. (laughs) And you know, actually, that's a really good point. I think a part of me also... And I don't know if it's embedded in me again, going back of like why I've always been this way, but I'm just always been big about inclusion. So a mom who can't afford something. Like I want people to have access to information. I was very fortunate that my husband and I had resources that we had and I still struggled. So in my mind, I'm like, goodness gracious, if if I'm struggling and I have access, we have money, thank God, right? We have two working parents in the household. I have my parents. What about a single mom? What about a family who can't? So it's always been big of me or in my mind for the inclusion aspect. And of course, yes, to your point, being a working mom and being like, wait, I feel a little left out. Like, where are the stuff for the moms that work? Um, And I think it should be for everyone. Have a morning group, have an afternoon group, like have as many groups as you can. We need this. Um, And that's where we're at today. Yes. Oh, I love how you approach it. Like you're just coming at it with such heart and such passion and oh, Thank you. I just love it. Okay. Thank anyway. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, to your point, that's actually a big thing because I think without passion, you can't sustain, right? Um, and you do a podcast, so you know it's hard work. It is hard work. It's hard work running a business. It's hard work having a podcast. You have to have these conversations. You research your guests. You, the, the time, the energy that it takes to do all of this. And trust me, if I didn't love it or didn't have that passion to want to do it, oh, I would have stopped doing this a long time ago. Um, but I love it. And it is something I am passionate about. So thank you for recognizing that because I hope it shows because I, I want it to show. This is This is what I love doing. I want moms to feel empowered, uplifted, and supported because we deserve to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and even if people do sustain without passion, you can see right through it. You know, like you can see right through that. Yes. Bullshit, I think so. To be honest. Sorry for cursing so much on this episode, you guys, but you know me, I, know. I keep Is it, it just... real. I keep it real. <laughs> I have to yes. say what I feel. Yes. <sighs> yes. I agree. I agree. I think you, it does. It doesn't come off as authentic. And again, I think we've talked about this being authentic. I mean, it's part of my human design. I literally had my human design read and he was like, oh no, you, you live your North, you, you have a North star, you, yeah. you live by it. And I was stunned. I was like, oh my God, I do. I was like, I won't connect with people. I have left jobs. I, my integrity is everything. So it's very important that that comes across. Um, so yeah, it does come across as bullshit if you're not. <laughs> Yeah. And side note, if you're listening, Mama, like if you don't know your human design, go find your human design. We will pop a link in the show notes where you can access that. We have a whole episode on human design. Go check it out. We'll link that too. Uh, Human design is like this secret sauce language you need to know about your your makeup of who you are. So find out. Totally agree. I definitely second that. Okay. Nicole, you do something called Release, Reset, and Recharge. Tell us more about this and why we might need to adapt this philosophy into our lives, especially as ambitious working moms. 
Yeah. So, you know, it was funny because again, with my podcast, you develop your questions and things that you want to ask. And I know a lot of things was like self-care and how do you balance and would talk to some people. They're like, I hate the balance word. And I was like, yeah, I get it. And then I'm like, well, you're not really balancing. You're kind of juggling. You're trying to keep things from kind of falling apart. Right. Um, so then I, I put it all to the side. I'm like, what are we, what are we really doing? And I'm like, oh, we're finding ways to release. We're finding ways to reset and we're finding ways to recharge. And I asked my guests, um, every guest I have kind of, how do they find ways to do this? So for myself, um, the importance of it was because self-care can mean so many different things to many different people. Yes. But the act of self-care is you releasing something, you resetting and you recharging. Um, and the things that I do for release, reset, and recharge are many different things. I used to think that it was only about me, but then I realized actually spending time with my husband allows me to release, reset, and recharge. When him and I aren't seeing eye to eye, I feel it and it trickles down. Um, so I make sure we spend time together. That's a big one for me. Um, going out, I release, reset, and recharge. Sometimes I like watching TV. You and I have also talked about this when I worked with you, you know, in time management um, and time management, you know, sometimes I just want to watch TV and that releases, I release whatever stress I'm feeling. I kind of reset for whatever the next thing I have to do. And it leaves me recharged to do whatever my next, next next task is or to be prepared for the next role that I have. So that kind of is where it, it steamrolled from because it, it wasn't just like, what do you do for self-care? It's like, well, no, what do you do to release for yourself? And some people actually are like, oh, wow, I haven't thought of it that way because it is such a like, yeah, no, like you're releasing something. You need to reset and then recharge to go on and, and do the next thing that you need to do. Yeah, so true. I love how you said that self-care does look different for different people. And I just want to add to that, like, it's also different during different seasons. It's different yes. different days. It's different, different times of day, different times yes. of day. Like in the morning, self-care might look like, you know, um, a workout or, you know, I don't know, fill in the blank, a cup of coffee or something. But like so at 9 p.m., I don't want to work out or drink coffee. I want to fill in the blank with whatever it is. So, you know, don't don't put your self-care definition sort of in a box of what you think it's always been or has to be. Sometimes self-care can be, you know, organizing your pantry, guys. I'm serious. Like sometimes yes. it can be something like whatever's going to make you feel whole again, recharged, as Nicole says, that's yes. what you need to do. I totally second. I think we've even talked about that as well. Like I, I remember one time I was like, oh, I had this laundry basket and literally sitting there having, actually, I think I had two laundry baskets, folding those clothes and putting them away and seeing an empty basket. Oh, it just made me feel That's so good. And I think, so you're, right. So it's like, sometimes <laughs> you're right. We have to reevaluate what it is, which is why I'm like the self-care aspect. I was like, I think it's releasing, resetting, recharge. And if releasing your stress, sometimes folding clothes gives me peace at times. I'm just not ready for it maybe at the time I need to, but it, when things are quiet, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this laundry, fold and close. I feel good. I feel good knowing that I'm going to have an empty basket. All of those things I'm kind of releasing and then I'm resetting for, you know, whatever. And then um, I'm a little bit more recharged than I was maybe 30 minutes ago. Yeah. And I always say, if you're not motivated to like do a task or something like that, Think about how you'll feel when it's done and let that be oh, yes. the factor that pushes you sometimes because, yeah, I, I really believe – I mean, laundry is a big deal here, six people. Like, I Oof. really believe an empty laundry basket is like euphoria, like that euphoric feeling. In this house. <laughs> and it rarely happens because I feel like as soon as it's empty, it's, it's a sock is thrown in or something. But for that nanosecond, damn, life feels good. It does. There was like a meme I posted. It was like in your 20s, you're excited about whatever it is. Hey, friend, let's, you know, what's the next spot we're heading to, excuse me, or the next party. And then like in your 30s or me, you know, last year of my 30s, it's, you know, um, getting your laundry basket done and, you know, figuring out what items you want to decorate your kitchen. Or for me, I'm, you know, redoing my office. So it's, it's hilarious how the different stages, or as you said, seasons, we need different things. And to the moms listening, that's okay. That's normal. You're not going to stay the same. We can, you know, it's, it's the different seasons of life. Um, and I think people need to focus on that a lot more of the seasons and not just the, it has 
has to be this way or that way or, you know, but the season that we're in. And I think if we take a step back and realize that and recognize where we are in life, I think we'll be a lot better for it in many different ways. For sure. Yeah. Remember the fluidity, like life is fluid. It's all fluid. The village is fluid. Like it's going to shift and evolve all the things. So if you can embrace that aspect, I think you will live a much happier life. (laughs) I completely agree. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I know we could sit here and chat all day long, girlfriend, (laughs) but let's move on to our lightning round. I'm going to ask you some just for fun type questions. Our listeners are going to get to know you more personally. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's see. If they made a movie about your life, who would you want to play you? Jennifer Lopez. Oh, yes. I see it. I see it. (laughs) She's Puerto Rican from the Bronx. I'm Puerto Rican from the Bronx. Hello. Yes. Jenny from the block. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. All right. What's your cocktail of choice? I know you always post like these bougie cocktail photos. So So I love tequila. And it has to be a repesado with a little pineapple juice. And it has to be pure pineapple juice with some jalapeno and a little salt around the rim. And we're good to go. <laughs> That's it. We're good to go. That's it. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. High yes. standards. Yes. Exactly. Do love it, girl. It. All right. What if you could have any superpower? What would it be? Oh, I used to ask my guests this too. Um, superpower. What would it be? Um... Oh, goodness. Um, I think flying. I think flying is a cool one, you know, to be able to or like teleport if I, you know, right now I'm like, you know, I wish I could be in Bali. Boom, I'm in Bali. (laughs) Do you know what's so funny? People answer this question in this way a lot. Like this is probably one of the most popular answers. And I would never think to say it, but it is a good one. It is such a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was like, I don't know what other things I'm like, realistically, I'm like, yeah, right now, if I could have a superpower, it would be, listen, I have some time. I'd love to go to Bali for the weekend and be back within minutes. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Love it. Uh, What's your guilty pleasure TV show? Ooh, that's a good one. Cause we stopped, I stopped. um, Oh, what is the good goodness? I used to love the housewives and all of that. Um, basketball wives. I haven't watched those in a while. Oh, you know what my new gu- guilty pleasure is, but it's probably not anything is the home edit. I just found out about the home edit. Yeah. And I absolutely I love it. I'm obsessed. I was on the container store website. Um, so yeah, I guess if, if I had to say a guilty pleasure show that I'm just obsessed with, and actually Netflix has a lot of good, my husband and I found the school for chocolate or this, yeah, something like that. And they make these sculptures, like those kind of things I'm now into. No more the trashy TV. <laughs> I like I like the organizational shows now. Have you seen? I mean, it's a few years old now, but have you seen like the Marie Kondo one that she did? I did. I saw that briefly. Hilarious. So my husband read her book years ago and has been doing her folding mm-hmm. method. I mean, his laundry that he has, I don't fold his clothes, will be sitting in his basket for weeks and I've learned to ignore. That's his thing. But when that man folds his clothes, oh. It's like oh, yeah. a, he's been Marie Kondoing it for like years. So when the show came out, he's like, uh, oh, I knew it. Um, so I kind of knew the method, but I loved how she would go in. So yeah, no, I love it. That's what I'm saying. We're older. So the older we get, the little things that we find and we love for sure. Um, can I just say, I just discovered yesterday that Marie Kondo and I are have the same human design makeup with the exception of one thing, but like we are both two, four projectors. And I was like, oh. <gasps> This makes so much sense. Really? <laughs> how, and how did you find out that that was her? Just, that that was her human design. It. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm only <laughs> trusting what someone posted. I mean, Marie Kondo didn't tell me herself, but I mean, maybe one day she will on this show. But um, ah, love it. Yes, I was like, okay, I. This is why I love her. This, is, I mean, my draws mm-hmm. don't look like that all the time. <laughs> True story. But I sure wish yes. they did. Like she's, mm-hmm. I strive to yes, be more no, I like love that, it. you know? No, she's, no, she's fantastic. And I, actually, and the whole like sparking joy that has always stuck with yes. me, even for my husband. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with it. All the home organization on building things that I, I, that Netflix has. Yeah. They have some really good TV stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All actually, right. you know, it's another good one. Sorry. I'll say one oh, more. No, that's how okay. to build a, this is probably so whatever, but Hey, how to build a sex room. Have you ever seen that on Netflix? <laughs> 
check it out, mom. Listen, you want to. You want to talk about like, it's just, it's a phenomenal show. The lady, the host, she's this little British woman that reminds me of like Angela Lansbury, but with like spiky hair. Um, And she just goes, and I mean, I know it sounds like what it is and there are some moments, but it really is about intimacy with partners more than anything. And she talks about like how to recreate the intimacy. And it's just so relatable because a lot of them are people with children, you know, and couples. So definitely highly recommend checking that one out. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Okay. That might be the best answer I ever got. Nice. Yes. All right. Finally, what's something most people don't know about you? Um, I don't know. I'm pretty transparent. Um, that don't know about me. Um, probably that I'm more sensitive, maybe like if I thought of on a personal personality, I think people think that I'm so bold and everything, but I'm very sensitive, very empathetic. I mean, I'll watch things with my son. He's like, are you crying, mommy? Um, And I'm like, maybe like, that's just yeah. So maybe that I'm more sensitive. I'm left handed. And I have a lot of the left handed traits that come with it. Very proud of being a lefty. Uh, So yeah, probably just that I'm sensitive. I know I can come across as this strong. But oh, yeah, like, you know, I feel all of the things. I'm a a really big empath. Amazing. That's probably what makes you so good at running the motherhood village. Oh, thank you. Yeah, but it yes, a gift and a curse, right? Because then I run across everybody and I'm like, well, how can I help? What can I do? You know, like it's, I got to learn, I can't help everyone and yes. I can only help and do what I can do. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a thing that I'm learning. True, true. All right, Nicole, well, we are just about ready to wrap up. But before we do, please tell our listeners where they can find you. Sure. So I am on Instagram at the motherhood village one and there are periods. So it'd be the period motherhood period village one. Um, and my website, the motherhoodvillage.com. You can get podcast episodes there, but Instagram is a big one. I'm also on LinkedIn. You can find me under Nicole. I think it's Nicole Cumberbatch or maybe Nicole G Cumberbatch and Facebook as well as the motherhood village. There's a page there for the motherhood village and on my podcast, the motherhood village is on Spotify, Apple, Castbox, all the listening stations you can and where you ever you listen to podcasts. We will definitely link all that in the show notes. So thank you so much, Nicole, for being here, being a guest, sharing your wisdom, sharing your story. We are so appreciative. Thank you so much, Marissa, for having me and to your guests. Thank you for listening. And always remember um, to stay true to your North Star. And um, yeah, that you got this. Take care. You've been listening to the Mama Work It podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and would love if you could take a quick minute to leave me a review on whichever platform you're listening from and maybe even send a note to a fellow mama friend recommending it. Reviews and recs help this podcast grow and reach more like-minded, awesome moms. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that button so we can stay in touch, girl. By the way, if you haven't checked out the Mama Work It website, please do. There are lots of free resources and great articles there that can help you with the juggle of work life, mom life, wife life, fill in the blank life. So head on over. Thanks again for being part of the tribe. I'll see you soon, but in the meantime, keep on working it, mama.